Welcome to On the Spectrum. I'm your host, Terry Matthews, and this is the show where we inform you, entertain you, and yes, educate you about all things autism. We like to call it Prescription TV. Joining me today on Let's Talks is Mr. Joe Martin. He is the CEO of Acclaim Academy Early Learning Center. And you know what? We have a lot of parents who ask us all the time, where do I take my child to daycare when they're diagnosed with autism? Well, Joe is here to talk to us just how we can pick the best provider for our kids. Hi, Joe. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, so this is a subject that we have a lot of parents that write in, talk to us quite a bit. They always want to know, like, how do I pick a daycare provider? And you are in charge of all of our kids, which I know is a big risk and sometimes a liability. But how can you help our parents be at ease and show them the best way to pick a provider? It's very tough. Um, they really have to be careful. They have to know what they're looking for in a center, what things are important to them. More importantly, things that are important to their children. Mm -hmm. So they have to be very careful, just like they would with any other part of the child. Uh, making sure that they use their senses, their, their nose, their ears, their eyes, and reviewing uh, what's important to them at a center. Would you recommend to any parents out there as they're out looking for daycare providers, what type of questions should they be asking when they have a kid that's on the spectrum? One of the, the best things, well, even before we do that, they need to make sure that this center is right, that uh, the center is open for therapists to come in. Um, some centers That's have therapists. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Um, you don't want to go into a center and, and they turn you away because there is no facilities or they don't have any relationships with the organizations that can provide assistance. At Acclaim, we have a partnership with Drexel University. They uh, can help our parents who either have been nearly diagnosed newly diagnosed or they can help parents who are currently diagnosed in support systems. I, I would have to say that's extremely important because even with me, when Jaden was diagnosed, um, he, he was initially with a nanny and then after that we put him into a daycare facility thinking that if he were around other children, integrated with other children, that would help him. Um, and the challenge we had sometimes is that the centers did not know how to support his needs mm -hmm. or even incorporate therapists to come in. So this mm -hmm. is extremely mm -hmm. important. Um, what would be your recommendation to a parent when it comes to saying, hey, I'm approaching your center. I have a kid that's on the spectrum. They see about three or four people a week. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you, do you have a private room or, or can they work in the room with other kids? Are, are these things that parents are able to ask? Do you allow that at your center? And should other centers allow it? Well, one of the things that we do initially is we look at um, when they fill out their application, do they have an IEP? Oh, uh, wow. If they have IEP, that makes our work a lot easier. Because um, the biggest challenge with uh, children on the spectrum is when they have tantrums, or not even tantrums, when they have the meltdowns. Meltdowns, yeah. When they have the meltdowns. Uh, when they have the IEP, then our teachers and our staff know exactly where to tend to that child and how to tend to that child. Bring that child back down. Um, it's when we don't have IEP or parents haven't got their child evaluated, that's where we have to play the guessing game. Joe, where were you <laughs> when Jaden was going through this? Let me tell you why that's so important because a lot of times with our families, especially when you're talking about that, that preschool type of age, right? Mm -hmm. Some of our families wait a long time before they get a diagnosis, and so they don't have an IEP, right? And for those of you who don't know what an IEP is, that's the Individualized Education Plan. Uh, you'll hear more if you click on our episodes where we talk about what an IEP is. But what's important for our parents to understand, it's important to have that because it tells their teachers what to do and how to support that exactly. child's needs, exactly. right? Exactly. So so what would you say are some of the challenges you have, if any, when having a kid that's on the spectrum integrated in the classroom with other kids? Our biggest challenge is the meltdown is, and tending to the child's needs. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, if they have IEP, it already indicates in the plan what we need to do for this particular child. Mm -hmm. We need to have soft spaces. We need to have a library. Um, and then if you have a, a very good curriculum that focuses on what other tools they can use, such as blocks, that they have to stack the blocks. That's part of the curriculum, part of the learning process. I love that. Yeah. So you, we know that our kiddos have a lot of free play too, just in general. You don't mm -hmm. have to be autism to have free play mm -hmm. at, mm -hmm. at daycare, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you do with free play when it comes to autistic individuals? Is that a time for therapy or learning? Or do you just integrate them with other kids to help them with their social skills? Well, the IEP allows you to do both. It allows you to match their play with their learning. And a good curriculum will also provide that as well. So if the children are playing, which they should be, we dedicate at least four hours of our time of the day to creative play, to learning play, playing through learning. And particularly the IEP tells the teacher 
exactly what tools are best to use for a particular child. So when they have free play, they can go to the soft space. They can mm -hmm. go to the library. Right. They can go to the sand uh, box. They can go to the uh, blocks and stack. And each time they go to one of those areas, then they're able to use the learning that's indicated in their IEP. So let, I heard you say teachers, because that's a big deal. And I am learning and, and seeing, even as I continue to travel the world and educate and advocate for those families, a lot of teachers, even in pre-K or daycare uh, centers, they don't necessarily understand how to even identify autism, because mm -hmm. some kids come along and they're not diagnosed. Mm -hmm. um, what would you recommend either for parents or for people who own daycare facilities in reference to educating their staff on the red flags for autism and approaching parents on it? That's the tough part. Um, our teachers, are they get training. They're, Pennsylvania provides particular trainings for um, children with autism on the, on the, on the spectrum. Um, we also have a, a very good tool called Ages and Stages. It's something that whether they have IEP or not, mm -hmm. the parent and the teacher work on it. So a child gets enrolled, the teacher does, uh, uses the Ages and Stages as a questionnaire. It's a tool. It allows us to highlight particular items that might be yellow flags instead of a red flag. And then the parents do it at home. And then after about 45 days, the parent and the teacher get together and they compare the results of the questionnaire. That way, again, the teacher can be honed in on what this child particularly needs and they can adjust the curriculum to address those specific needs. And then if the child has an IEP, then we can add that to what the child needs in the particular classroom. So let me just say this. I, I hope for our audience out there that this is giving them, you know, a little bit of um, soothing them a little bit because I think the challenge we all have as parents it's when we do know we have a child that's diagnosed with autism and we're sending them into a daycare facility where there's a lot of neurotypical kids that are there um, sometimes we're concerned that our teachers don't understand the mm -hmm, difference between mm -hmm, a meltdown and mm -hmm, a tantrum mm -hmm. or they're not quite sure exactly how a child will be handled when they have ed ed uh, learning differences yep, right yep. and so then the other challenge I have is sometimes where I'm going into facilities and I'm seeing kids that are obviously Obviously on the spectrum and nobody's saying anything so that ages and stages thing is great and I am so glad that you exist today and I know that not every person can get to your learning center unless you open them up all over the world but what I do want to say is I hope for those people that are out there that own daycare centers are listening to you especially as they continue to service the population in this growing population of those on the spectrum so tell me this what word of advice two things my last two questions for you what word of advice would you give to a daycare owner that might be servicing kids on the spectrum? One of the first things is make sure that uh, they seek out to become a STAR program. So in the state of Pennsylvania, child care centers have to volunteer to be part of this program. Mm -hmm. and it's called the STAR, Keystone STAR program. So if you're looking for a child care center, see if they're a Keystone STAR participant. We have four STARs, one, two, three, and four, four obviously being the best. STARs three and four are very involved in, in providing quality for their children, mm -hmm. and so therefore they have these type of tools. So a uh, child care owner, if you're not a STAR program, you need to join immediately so that you can get additional resources. And if you are still pro a STAR program, then you'll already know these programs and you'll be using them regularly. And for those of our parents who are either overseas or live in other states, you know, one thing, check out your local area. What's, what is a STAR program? Does it exist in your area? And if you don't have it, maybe you should be the one to develop it. Absolutely. And one last thing for our parents. So um, what can you do to reduce a parent's anxiety when they're leaving a nonverbal kid? Because Jaden was nonverbal in daycare. Um, what can you do to reduce the anxiety of a parent coming in saying, I have a nonverbal kid who has an IEP and has a lot of services, what do you think helps the parent to be able to walk away to a certain extent and, and be okay where they've left their child? Terry, I can't overemphasize the value of IEP because from a child care perspective, that makes our life a lot easier. Um, that it's very specific and uh, over time, on a side note, over time, the teachers and the director of the facility are involved in the planning that goes into the IEP. So I really can't emphasize the most that get your child evaluated. If they're evaluated, get the IEP, and that IEP can be used in um, addressing children with um, learning disabilities or with uh, inability to speak. We see that in IEP. We're able to address it when it becomes up, and it's not an issue. 
And I can't wait again for you all to uh, subscribe to our channel and find out more because we are discussing what an IEP is. Mm -hmm. um, Joe, I'm trying not to tear up because <laughs> that daycare uh, situation for me was so tough. It could be a nightmare. Um, it it could was be a nightmare. so tough. And when Jaden went, uh, we went through so many huge challenges. He had a TSS that was there. Um, we had a situation where he was nonverbal. He would come home sometimes with scratches and bruises, and I was afraid to now leave him at school. I get it. And when you have to make a decision of leaving your kid at a daycare. I get it. Um, or working and providing for your kid, it can be difficult. I get it. I get so it. Absolutely. So for all of you parents out there, um, you got to appreciate Joe's. Send, <laughs> send people like this cookies. You know, uh, we, we bring everything. Time food trays. Batter, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> all the stuff that's possibly needed to encourage because also it's a very difficult job for teachers or people providing assistance and care. So we can't forget about them as well. A true child care center is in the business of taking care of your children. Well, I'm so glad you're here. And um, I want to get behind you. If we can franchise you, let's take you all over the world. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so we hope during this segment of Let's Talk, you found useful information. And for more information like this, log on to www.onthespectrum.tv. Um, and don't miss an episode. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. That's all the time we have today. See you next time on The Spectrum. I'm telling you, like, yeah. seriously, no, it, it was, it was a time.